Hello there, how are you doing? And welcome to Wi-Fi Sheep at Christmas. And welcome back to the channel. So, I don't know what you've got planned over the Christmas holidays. I know a lot of people are off work, school, etc. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what can I do? Is there any little projects or anything that you know we could be doing during this time? And that's the theme for this season of Christmas videos here on Wi-Fi Sheep. And I thought we'd start with the C64 Mini. Now, if you follow the channel regularly, you'll know that I've had mixed feelings about this. My first review wasn't very good. They then did a firmware update, which greatly improved it. And um, yeah, I quite like the little thing. Admittedly, it's an ARM-based emulator box. It runs the Vice emulator, but it's all pre-set up. It has 64 games on board. Um, the keyboard, I've mentioned this before, doesn't do anything, but you can plug a USB keyboard in. What makes this different from other plug and play minis on the market is that it will officially support the adding of additional game ROMs, or in this case, disc images. And you can also program it. You can plug a keyboard in and you can actually write code using the Commodore basic language. Now, I never owned a Commodore 64 in the day. And my first experience of using one was effectively with the C64 Mini. Now, I know basic from BBC basic, which is the version I was grew up on and still use now. Uh, but I've read and watched videos that have stated that Commodore basic is a bit different which has posed some issues, especially when trying to tap things like graphics and system commands. However, the other day I was browsing around the internet and I found this incredibly interesting site, which I'll link to below. And on there, they actually had a couple of versions of BBC Basic for alternative systems. And one of them was a downloadable disc image for BBC Basic for the Commodore 64. Well, as you can imagine, I had to try this. So on today's video, we're going to load up BBC Basic onto the C64 Mini. And then I have here one of these old school 1980s programming books, mainly for children, for the BBC Micro. And we're gonna see how compatible the Basic in this is with the C64 Mini running BBC Basic. Okay, if we go to mdfs.net, you'll see the um, homepage here. This is one of these proper old school sites that looks about um, 20 years old or definitely what the internet was like 20 years ago. Um, nonetheless, very useful site. So if we click on BBC Basic here. This site amazingly has literally, I don't know how many, 50, 60, I want to say hundreds of ports of BBC Basic for all sorts of different CPUs and platforms. Uh, so if we select, let's have a look now, Commodore 64, which is here. And you can now see BBC Basic for Commodore 64. And the files we've got here, it's actually got a BBC Basic program and it has a BBC Basic disk image. Now what we need for this to work on the C64 Mini is to download the disk image. So we click the link and it's downloaded the file there. So what we do now is put my uh, correctly formatted FAT USB stick into the Mac. Okay, so I've got the file and all I'm gonna do is drag it onto the USB stick. And there's the file, so that should now be good enough to work. So we'll eject the stick and we'll go over to the C64 Mini and see if we can get this to load up. Okay, so we boosted up the C64 Mini, and we're just gonna go down to system information. Now, in order for this to work properly, you're going to need build 1.1.4 or later. Uh, this is the firmware update that gives us the USB access on the system that we've not had before. So, if we now go back to, back to the um, main menu, I'm going to put my USB stick in now. Now the setup itself, I've got keyboard attached, I've got uh, a video card in between the HDMI out, that's how you'll see the signal on the screen. And I have a USB hub that allows me to plug in my controller and also 
the USB stick that we're just going to put into the system now. And you can see that's now been picked up by the C64 Mini. So we can now just tap along to the USB icon. And unfortunately I've put quite a bit of um, rubbish on here. But you'll see here there's now a directory for BBC Basic, which is that file we put on from the Mac. So if we select that, we'll see what happens. And there we go, so that's now loaded into BBC Basic. So let's just see how well this works. So with BBC Basic you can apply some colour settings. So if I can ask, simply ask for a colour. So make sure our caps lock is on. That's the blue. Six. Yeah. I think we can ask for colour zero as well. So that's working well. Uh, well. Should be able to see our less. So we say colour zero. Oops. Colour seven rather. Now if I say colour one to eight. We now set the uh, background. So we've now got foreground and background color control. Uh, now, the other thing about Boost Basic, but it did state in the readme for this, was the modes aren't all supported. So with Boost Basic, you should be able to switch into different modes. However, it doesn't really support them. It just has one generic mode. Okay, so let's see now, just type in a very simple basic program. This would actually work in the straight Commodore basic, but we can try it here on BBC basic. So we'll say 10 uh, X equals X plus one. Oops, 20, print X, 30, go to 10. And as you can see that works quite well. It's adding one digit to the variable x and then it's repeating that each time and looping the program. So escape, we'll escape at line 30. You can list the program again. It's important to remember that the Commodore editor is still in play here. So you can't um, navigate the keys around like you would on a BBC Micro, but never mind. Okay, so I've been able to play around with this version of BASIC. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear to support the draw and graphics commands native to the BBC Micro, which is a bit of a shame. But we can still do some other stuff with this version of BASIC. One of the things we could do would be a looping colour program, which is a very, very simple uh, piece of code to put in. So I'll show you now. If we say 10 colour, and we say RND, and we go up to seven, let's say. 20, print, oops. Wi-Fi sheet, we leave a space, close the quotation marks, put a semicolon in, and then we'll go 30, Go to 10. Very simple free line program. Does this work? Let's type run, find out. Ah, oh, it does. There you go. So it does have control over the C64's color palette, uh, and we can do some things such as text manipulation. So if we just escape, escape line 30, um, let's try printing a CLS. Put it back into A mode. Oops. It doesn't really matter, it just has one default mode in this version, which unfortunately doesn't appear to support the graphics tools, but never mind. Um, so let's see if the print tab statement works. So we should be able to move around on the screen. So if I say print tab, and let's put some coordinates in. So let's say 
five across and ten down. And then put, let's say, hi. Does that work? Yes, it does. There we are. So we do have ability to control where text goes on the screen. Now, I did try some of the VDU statements on this, which seem to throw up some slightly odd results. So, for example, if I type VDU5, that should put us into the graphics mode. And it kind of throws this little checkerboard. And I'm not sure what that does, really. Uh, VDU4 would put us into text mode, but again, nah, not sure. doesn't appear to be doing what it should do. VDU7... Normally, you should call up the. Um, it, it's the recruitment to typing beep, which, of course, in this version of basic wouldn't work. Again, doesn't appear to be active. So, yeah, there's a few things missing from this, but um, it's interesting and it's another thing you can do with the C64 Mini. It is uh, such a shame about the uh, lack of graphics. Let's just list that program, it should still be in memory. So, I've had an idea. So let's retype that line 20 again. And this time we'll just put a space. We'll see if this works. And then we're going to retype line 10. So we're going to say color random. Ah. No, I don't know what I've done there. What's happened there? Okay, let's try. Let's try that again. Because clearly something's uh, gone slightly amiss, unfortunately. Oh dear. Oh dear, we do appear to be a bit buggy. I think a complete reset of the system is going to be needed here, in all honesty. And welcome back. Not sure what happened there, but let's just try that again. So whatever it was that went wrong has been fixed now. I have to restart the uh, C64 Mini. So we'll go to CLS uh, and let's put our program in. So 10, no, we'll say mode 1. 20, colour. We're going to say 128 to set it to backgrounds plus random 7. So it's going to add a random number between 0 and 7 to the number 128, which means it's going to run this in background colours. 30. Print, open quote, close quote. Semicolon, body, end, oh no, 40, go to 20 in this case, and 50, end. So we'll just list to make sure that looks about right. Now let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to stop that because that's borderline psychedelic. Um, okay, did not expect that one. Didn't see that one coming. What happened there? Okay. It sort of worked. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. Okay, that wasn't quite what I expected. Let's just change the colour uh, statement. Let's take that one to eight. Yeah, one to eight out. Just put R and D. And just quote it back to seven. Let's see what happens now. As expected, not a lot. Uh, let's list again. Oops. Because if I put a, a text character in there of anything, you sort of get the idea. Which in itself looks quite interesting, but um, yeah. So obviously there's a few incompatibilities and glitches. 
So unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to type in much from our BBC Micro book straight into this, as due to the lack of compatibility with the graphics modes and uh, the colour palettes, it's... Mm, if it was text-based stuff we were trying to deal with, there'd be no problem at all. Um, in fact, here on page 37 of the book, it says full colour with mode 2, and here's a programme which is text-based that I think would actually work. So let's try that and see what happens. So I'm literally going to just type this in and see what happens. Da. Oh dear, unfortunately it appears to have crashed again. Which is rather unfortunate. Ah. I don't think this is going to work particularly well. Oh well, it's been an interesting experiment, but um, yeah. Oh dear. Okay, um, I've just come back onto my Mac and I'm using the Vice C64 emulator. I've loaded up the disk image we tried with the C64 Mini. And I'm just going to load it in this just to see if it is the disk image that's the problem or if it's actually the C64 Mini's emulation. So, mode basic. Hopefully this will load. Okay, that's loaded. So now if we type run... I'm told if we type run. Okay, that has actually loaded in and seems okay. So if I now say mode one. No, that's still not there. Uh, let's just put that little program back in then. Okay, that's gone back in. Let's see if that runs. And it does. And we'll just leave that running now just to see how well it actually does. Okay, that's been running for a little while now and it seems quite happy on the emulator on the Mac. So we have to assume it is a problem with the C64 Mini. Or it's something to do with maybe memory addressing on the ROM for BBC Basic that we've loaded that's causing the problem. I don't know. But um, yeah... Interesting, but I'm not quite sure how usable this would be in the real world. So, um, unfortunately, that didn't quite work as well as I'd hoped. We do occasionally get failures here on Wi-Fi Sheep, and I think sometimes it's nice just to show the things that didn't quite go to plan. Otherwise, it gives you a, a false idea that everything I do works first time, and um, boy, it doesn't. But um, no, that was disappointing to be honest with you maybe i'm doing something wrong maybe it's the emulation on the c64 mini maybe it's the rom file it did say on the um, download that it was only ever in beta uh, so it could just be a rather buggy version but it was it was interesting nonetheless if you have an alternative version or have something that actually works a bit better another version of bbc basic maybe that works better on the c64 do drop me a comment and let me know or if i've just done something really obviously wrong I'd also be interested to be corrected if I can make this work better. Um, still, I think it was an interesting exercise and hopefully it's given you some inspiration to have a go at doing something yourself at home. Uh, but yeah, let me know. Okay then, well, until next time, um, thanks so much as ever for watching this video. Have a fantastic Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'll see you real soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now.